are here this weekend, as the pastor said, to kind of interview for some positions on your staff. This is my family. Um, my four boys would have so loved to have been a part of your VBS. They will be sad that this was your VBS Sunday um, and that we got the opportunity to see all the wonderful things that you did. Um, Pastor Ed um, asked me to bring a little message and I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about adventure. You guys just went on an adventure to Camp Kilimanjaro. Uh, growing up, my dad loved to be out in nature. He loved to be in the mountains. And so when I was little with my brother, who was a little bit older than me by three years, we would go into the Colorado mountains. And usually we would go on Sunday afternoons after church. And we went to this one place and it was way up in the woods. And he said, we're going to take a hike. No, there's not really a trail up there. It was just wonderful wilderness of Colorado and we hiked and he knew where he was going and he went to the top of this ridge and we looked out over this ridge and and we were just amazed and then he said to me and my brother okay you get us back and we're like what okay and he asked us questions he said how would you get us back Kyle, how would you get us back? And I said, well, we would, I, I think, I don't know, I think we'd follow the river. I would have been way wrong. We would have spent about five or six extra days in the wilderness or back in the Colorado mountains, and we would have been lost. And my brother's like, I, I don't know. I, I think we would go down the hill and over this way. My dad just shook his head, and he said, have I not taught you anything about knowing where you were going, about the adventure that you were on, and looking and seeing where we were going when we came. And what had happened was we had gone up this huge ridge, and then we went over the ridge, and we went over the ridge, there was a river down there. And that's where I was wrong, because I would have followed the river, and we would have been completely the opposite way. And my brother he would said, well, we'll go up, but we'll go over to the one side, and it would have been opposite. And sometimes we just, we think that we might have the right plan or the right understanding of where we need to go. But isn't it funny how the Father kind of always knows best, especially when you're out? So my dad told us, this time we need to go up the hill and then back down the hill, and we would be right back where we were. It was a wonderful learning experience for both of us because we would have gotten really lost. But the verse I want to read to you today is in Proverbs chapter 3, and it includes verses 5 and 6, but it says, um, verses 1 through 6, it says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So this picture is now my family, my four boys. They are wonderful and they like to make faces at cameras, as you can tell. But we went on this hike, and this is Helen Hunt Falls, and we went up, and we, we hiked up, and we went over this bridge, and when we went over this bridge, then we saw the trail that was to come up, and we looked at it and thought it was very daunting. But this trail zigzagged back and forth and back and forth. And as I walked with my boys and talked with them, I said, this is, this is a hard trail. And I'm like, yeah, but I want to go by the water. Um, I can't remember which one told me that. But if you follow the water, it would take you off in the wrong direction. 
So you take this trail and you walk back and forth and back and forth until you get to this ridge. And when you get to the top of the ridge, then you get this view right here. And this view is the top of the falls. And you can see the top of the falls from this ridge in which you had wandered back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to. And so we went there and we enjoyed it. And we took, we took many pictures, individual pictures with my kids. And my kids tried to take a picture of me and my wonderful wife. And it came out really weird looking, of course. But that's okay. So there was this ridge and we kept hiking but you had to go way out and around. And you went up. And when you finally got to the top, at the top, the view looks like this. You're looking way back down. Now, if you look over on the right-hand side, there's a little bit of a tan. That's the ridge that we were standing on when we took a picture of the top of the falls. And if you think about, or if you look exactly in line with how this picture goes, you look right at the ridge, and the ridge, then you would look right over, and there's the other falls. And guess what? It's in a straight line. So the, the thing is, is that this path, if you were to try to take a straight path straight up the mountain, it would be sheer rock face as you can see up at the top. And if you would have tried to take the path like I did when I was a kid and said, well, why don't you just follow the water and follow it up? You would have fallen down and they would have probably had to call the EMT and phone a helicopter up there and pulled you off the mountain. Um, but sometimes when we go on these treks, these adventures, kids, we sometimes we take paths that we don't expect. We go places and we walk up and down and around a rock because we can't get around that rock. But there's a plan for how you have to get up to the top of those falls. God's got a plan for how he wants things to work out. And he wants you to see that sometimes it's not the path that we think is straight. A couple of weeks ago when Pastor Ed was preaching, he talked about the windy road or the straight, the narrow path or the, the big and easy path. The path that God wants us to take that might be the biggest adventure of our lives might not be the easy way. And it might not be super straight. But he knows what he's doing. And he will take care of you along that adventure. The, there were times in which me and my brother would fight and would, uh, trying to understand every time we would go up to the mountains with my dad. But we finally would catch on. We would finally learn how to mark our trail to go up and go the way that we needed to go. And we learned each and every time that we would go. And each and every time that you guys go to VBS, you learn something new, and it builds that knowledge inside of who you are. And sooner or later, it becomes the path that you know to take, that God has laid out for you, even though it might take you to some random places back and forth. But when God's there, and God is leading, and God wants you to be there, he makes it clear. And he gives you this amazing view and this amazing understanding that those waterfalls all are in a straight line if you look right over the ridge. Today, remember that. Remember that it's not easy. And sometimes we need to stop and think and learn about what God has for us inside of the adventures that we go on together. Pastor? Yeah? Well, we've been on an adventure, and um, it's been a great week, and thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, we've all been on those, and I've 
shared when I've tried to take shortcuts sometimes. And when we try to take a shortcut on God's path, we can really get into trouble. So just if we follow his leading, we'll, it'll turn out great. One thing that uh, one of the kids, one of our little kids asked me a question this week. You know, why, why do we sponsor kids? Um, it's a good question. We didn't ex- we, I explained that to them, but I want to explain. Ultimately, we have kids around the world who need food, clothing. Some of them don't get to go to school. Some of them don't live in safety. We learned about one little girl who had to, they had to flee their village because they were, um, because of war and because of danger. But the ultimate reason that we do that, the reason we take them food and clothing and all of that is so that we can tell them about Jesus, so that we can tell them how much God loves them and, um, and how much he really wants to be a part of their lives. And I'll share this one thing, and then we'll get to this part that I'm sure you guys are curious about. Um, at General Assembly, our, our church every four years has a big conference for our, our church. And at that one, the thing that impressed me the most about the whole time there's a lot of good stuff that goes on, was there was a chance for a family to meet for the very first time a child that they had sponsored for many years. And he was no longer a child. He was now a grown man who had become a pastor. And they put those families together. He, he was there, and this couple who had sponsored him for 20, well, however many years it was. I don't know how many years. Um, enough years to take him from a child where he was through school. And... Uh, that made it so worthwhile, just like in the, the video today, um, where those, that young girl started sponsoring that other girl in Africa and had a chance to, uh, to create that relationship. Anyway, thank you guys for being with us. Thank you for letting us minister to your kids. Hopefully they have learned some proverbs, some good scripture, and some songs that they're probably going around in the house saying, Jumbo, not Jumbo. Jumbo. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So today, the offering was $602.35 today. Thank you. Good job. That means the total for the week was $1,330.35. So, Stephen, you are not only getting plucked, you're getting you're getting painted. Yeah. So that's good. We're going to do that at the barbecue a little bit later. And the way we've kind of kept track about about how this this plays out is it it costs about 25 cents a meal. So that means that so far this this week we've raised over 5,321 meals for kids. That's how that breaks down. So that's wonderful. So who do you think won today? Okay, was it the zebras? Just let the zebras cheer. Was it the zebras? Or the gazelles? Or was it the uh, rhinos? Or the lions? Well, I tell you, no matter who wins today, we have a bunch of children who've won. Who've won because of your generosity. So thank you for that. All right, here it is. Drum roll. Okay, in fourth place, in fourth place, were the green zebras. That's still great. You did wonderful. In third place, were the blue gazelles. Oh, yay. In second place, here it is. You know, let's just go to lunch, okay? Oh, do you want to know? Oh, I'll just tell you at lunch. No, you want to know now? Okay, in second place were the red rhinos. That means the orange lions won. So they get to do the honors today at lunch. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Thank you. You're all invited. In just a few moments, we're going to dismiss, and we have barbecue, and we have food. We have decided, since it's going to be so hot, I think uh, we have some people that are up at Hoop Fest in, in Spokane, and they said that yesterday it was uh, almost 150 degrees on the asphalt up there. 
So we decided that we're going to go ahead and leave the bounce house inside the church, up in the teen center, so that we don't have to, to deal with some of that heat. But we're going to be back that way, and you're invited to come back to the fellowship room and share in that. Let me do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us as we dismiss, and then I'm going to pray for our food so that when we get back to where we're ready, we can go ahead and eat, because it's going to take us a while to get everything done. Um, and one last thing, and I always say this, but thank you, parents, for sharing your kids with us. We consider that a sacred, sacred trust, but please take them with you when you go. <laughs> We love them to visit, but we want them to go home with you. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful day and this wonderful week of Vacation Bible School. And I thank you, um, not about the offering, that's just a fun thing we do, but it's a way that we can give back and minister to boys and girls around this world. And I, I'm just so, so thankful for what you've done with this generosity. And, but Lord, I'm more thankful for what you've done in the lives of these kids and how you are growing inside of them. Our ultimate goal is that they would just know you as their personal Savior and that they would serve you. Now I pray that you would bless us as we fellowship. We do this part well. Help us to eat good and to enjoy that, enjoy in each other's company, to have a lot of fun. And I pray that you would uh, prepare Stephen for the journey that he's fixing to go on today. Thank you, Father, for your love and your grace. In Jesus we pray. Amen.